so that they can afford to give people health care. The more people you give health care to, folks, the more you spread the risk of sickness. Half the people who don't have health care are well, but they just can't afford to buy it. If they buy it, if we give them a little help to buy it, then they're covered and they're paying into the system what they can and a whole bunch of them can afford to pay the full weight. <coughs> then you're spreading evenly the cost of paying for the people who do get sick. That's what insurance is. That's what you do for your car. That's what you do for your house. Why don't we do it for people, for sickness? So our bill, I'm afraid, got caught up in a lot of lies by people who just decided they wanted to whack it in order to defeat Obama, in order to play the perpetual campaign game. And so I remember, I saw the ads during this last race we just had in Massachusetts, where seniors were being scared, told there's going to be a cut in your benefits in Medicare. Not true. No cut in benefits of Medicare took place. In fact, we extended the life of Medicare by 10 years. And you know how we did it? By a 1% increase in the fee that individuals over $200,000 of income. How many of you are earning more than $200,000 a year? How many people in Massachusetts are earning more than $200,000 a year? Those are the only people who would have paid anything additional in order to extend the life of Medicare for 10 years. Do you know that Medicare, you stopped paying taxes on Medicare at $106,500 of income? Can somebody tell me why? Why is it that somebody earning $200,000 doesn't pay anymore? But you're paying for it. If you're earning $40,000 a year, you're covering the person who's earning $200,000 a year. Explain the logic of that to me. We didn't even fix that in this. But it just shows you the unevenness of what happened. Here. I saw a lot of people arguing that this bill was somehow uh, going to uh, uh, you know, uh, raise taxes on everybody and oh, we'll cut Medicare. You know what we cut in Medicare? <laughs> I cut it. Medicare has two programs called Medicare you know, Part B, Part A. And um, the, uh, you have something called Medicare Advantage, which we created in the 1990s to allow private companies to provide Medicare benefits to people, not just have them through the public, but through private. We opened it up. The deal was that they would be competitive with the public. Well, guess what happened over a few years? The lobbyists came in, and they started banging away. And, and get, sure enough, the private started getting paid more than the public. That's not the way it was meant to be. So that today, your taxpayer dollars, 114% is paid back to the private for what is only paid at 100% to the public. It's a higher reimbursement for the same service. We said, whoa, we didn't want that to happen. We're not in the job of overpaying the private sector, and nor should your taxpayer dollars be doing that. So that was the cut. We just put it back to the same 100% as the public side. And the other side, oh boy, we can make a big political deal out of this. We're going to claim they're cutting Medicare. And they ran around and scared the hell out of everybody. They're cutting Medicare. No, we were just making it even with what the public piece was getting. So we've got a big job, all of us, not just our job. It's not Nikki's and my job and Steve's and Kevin's. It's your job. We've got to go out and talk to our fellow citizens <coughs> so that people are voting on the truth and on facts, and that we're making real choices about our future. Now.